So what does Jesus offer? Look at this 14th chapter and the end of verse 1. Uh, it says, having, this is Revelation 14.1, the, the end of the verse, having his father's name written on their foreheads. As the world plunges into desolation and destruction, God gives us living proof that he cares. What is that? Well, remember, the book of Revelation that is given right here in, at the end of these two generations refers back to all the other scriptures. Look what Romans chapter 8 says, because I really believe that these 144,000 are just a visualization, a kind of an illustration of what God has already promised. He's doing it with them just like he wants to do it with us. And it says in, see on the slide, Romans 8:37 to 39, yet in all these things, all what things? Well, look at verse 36. We're killed all the day long. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's what's going on in the tribulation period. In this time, people are being martyred. Now, not the two witnesses yet. A little bit later, the Antichrist will kill them. Not the 144,000. Uh, the Lord is using them, not the gospel witness, but all the saints that hear the gospel are being martyred and they're counted as sheep for the slaughter. But look at 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. Nothing, nothing of all these angelic monsters, these fallen angels, not the beast, not the Antichrist, not Satan himself, look at this, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus offers true security and joy, no matter what's going on in the world around you. Now, right now we're in the middle of the pandemic. Did you know many Christians are acting fearful? They're, they're not acting, they are fearful. And, and they're, they're actually responding the same way the world is responding. Rather than knowing that Jesus offers true security, nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing, no created thing, no demon, no monster, and no pandemic, because we are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's what Romans 8, and, and any of you that are new, following the Lord, and I know some of you are, I, I'm reading all these posts you're making on both YouTube and Facebook and, and on our website, and, and it's a joy. I hope some of you I've heard from are even watching this lesson, but you have recently come to faith in Christ. Well, that verse on the slide, Romans 8, 37 to 39, is one you ought to have marked in your Bible. That is one of the greatest promises. There's no separation from God's love, and that's what Jesus offers. But keep going to verse 3, because Jesus also, in Revelation 14, 3, is offering what I call purity in the sea of filth. Now, where I get that term sea of filth is from um, one of the Roman historians said that the Roman Empire uh, in the first century had degenerated to a level that it was like a cesspool. A cesspool is like a septic tank. It's like a sewer system. And he said that's what Rome had become, kind of like a sewer. Well, look what Jesus offers. Purity in the sea of filth. Verse 3, they sang as it were a new song, and no one could know the song but the 144,000 redeemed. Verse 4, these are the ones who were not defiled with women. What is that? Does that say women are bad? No. That's harkening right back. Do you remember to chapter 9? Look at chapter 9, the last verse. They did not repent of their murders or sorceries or their sexual immorality. The characteristic of the tribulation is gross immorality. These 144,000 witnesses, these men, did not succumb to the temptations of immorality. They were pure in this sea of filth, uh, which reminds me of two of my favorite verses, Hebrews 9.14, which is a verse I learned. I remember before I went to college, after high school, I was a truck driver for about a year and a half. 
And I can never forget those days of backing my truck up to the loading dock, jumping out with my clipboard, coming up to the, the shipping receiving clerk's desk, putting my, my clipboard down there, and I would look up and I learned that on every shipping clerk loading dock back wall were pornographic posters. It was just kind of the thing in the 70s. Uh, it was kind of the Hugh Hefner Playboy era, and they would put those centerfolds up. And I remember the first time I slid my clipboard up and looked, I was just shocked. I just stood there. And then I looked away. And then it became a conscious choice every time I backed my truck up and delivered somewhere, whether I was going to look at what they had pasted up. But guess what? Our minds are kind of like one of these, you know, 16 megapixel cameras on our iPhones. Once your mind sees something, it's imprinted in your mind. And I'll never forget when I learned Hebrews 9.14. Look what it says. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your minds from works that lead to death. Do you know what I found the Lord could do? If I ask, he could give me purity in the sea of filth of loading docks. He can erase the pictures that are in our minds. Did you know they're only in our minds if we want them there? But if we come and ask him to cleanse, that's what verse 22 of chapter 10 says. Huh? Let us draw near to God in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, from all those things that, that we know don't please God. So Jesus offers purity in a sea of filth.